Welcome to another episode of I Know Jax. I'm Joe Talentino. Now, before we jump into the first story, I just wanted to let you know about I Know Jax. What I try to do with my show is to focus on the fun side of Jacksonville. I do stories about food and drink and fun things to do. It's as simple as that. <laughs> Sometimes I even include a road trip, but that's okay because it's still a fun thing to do. Now, I'm not like the news. There's no doom or gloom. They do that really well. I'm all about sunshine. Hey, this is the sunshine state after all. <laughs> Some people might say I'm shallow and do nothing but fluff, and that's okay with me because I think sunshine and fluff are important. <laughs> we all need a little bit of sunshine in our lives. So with that, let's get on with the show. So I'm back in the kitchen at the Candy Apple Cafe with Chef Jamie, and you're gonna make something pretty awesome for us today, right? Yeah, I'm gonna make our uh, escargot dish that we also do for happy hour, it's half size. And uh, we offer a crepe du jour every day for happy hour, and I'm gonna make a Mongolian barbecue short rib crepe. Sounds awesome, let's we'll see it. Gotta have a hot pan. Gotta have a hot pan. Gotta have a little oil. So we add our escargot. And for, for those who don't speak French, that's snails, snails. right? <laughs> that's right. That's right. They come out of the shell. Yeah, cool. Chef Jamie adds shallots, a little chopped garlic, and lets it saute and soak up the flavors for a few minutes. Meanwhile, he starts the short rib crepes. We want to keep the marbled meat. That means tenderness and flavor. A little bit of barbecue sauce. Oh, that, that looks tasty. Okay. Garlic and shallots are starting to brown. Okay. This is the fun part. Take it off the heat and hit it with some sherry. Heck yeah. Fire! And mushroom duck cell. Finely chopped mushrooms. Oh, herbs. nice. What type of mushrooms are they? Um, I use oysters and shiitakes. Nice. Uh, when chanterelles are in season or other nice mushrooms, wild mushrooms, we use those. Cool. A little bit of heavy cream. Oh, yeah. Cream makes everything better. If you guys could smell this, oh my gosh. So this is a volant or a boucher, it's puff pastry. Boucher, that sounds, uh, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> fancy. It's so a type gonna, of pastry. It's puff pastry, it's just a, it's a fancy French term. Cool. And We're that, just gonna heat this in the salamander for a second. We'll yep. put a couple little guys on top. See, this is a French restaurant, so, uh, you know, presentation is like, I was going to say 90%, but that's probably wrong, but it's, it's, it's as important. It is. It is. You eat with your eyes first. Oh, absolutely. And uh, my eyes are saying yum right now. There we go. The little pesto. Oh, nice. So this is normal pesto, pine nut, olive oil, basil. Basil, pine nut. There you go. Um, A little salt, pepper garlic, parmesan, and then uh, a little white truffle oil. Just a oh, little white bit. truffle oil, nice. And that's it, that's our happy hour escargot. And okay, now we're gonna finish our short rib crepe. He adds the meat to the pan with a little bit of barbecue sauce. And I used to think crepes were pancakes. And obviously they look like them a little bit, but They're there's a big difference. Paper They're thin. so thin. Paper thin. It's a prerequisite to work in this kitchen. You have to make, you have to make before a crepe. you do it. I probably would not pass that test. And then this is called the French roll. I don't know. I'm just making that up. <laughs> this is. So happy hour, we serve about half this portion. Okay. Then he adds pickled jalapenos, baby arugula, radishes, and crunchy sweet potatoes. Order them, because they don't last long. So Candy Apple Cafe does both French cuisine and Southern cuisine. So Chef was nice enough to make me a little chicken and a waffle to go along with the escargot and the crepes we have. This place is awesome, besides the drinks, they got great food, and they're located in the Seminole building right next to us, or in the same building as Sweet Pete's. So come check them out and tell them I know Jack sent you. Florida is the sunshine state and I know Jack's fits right in. We spread even more sunshine. Now in this show, we're gonna talk a lot about the important things in life, food and drink. Now to me, making drinks doesn't look that hard. And by the way, 
I think I'm qualified to have an opinion about this because I've intently studied the work of a lot of bartenders here in town. <laughs> I know it looks easy, just mix things together and do a little cool shake and you have something totally awesome in your glass. But guess what, man? When I try that at home, well, let's just say it doesn't work out perfectly. <laughs> it's not as easy to achieve that perfectly balanced drink. Now here's a bartender who's an expert at just that. It's time to head over to Bar Manager Mike. Uh, you use different types of ice. There, you know, for this particular cocktail, you want to use a larger ice, okay. larger surface area, so that the spirits shine through. So it um, doesn't melt too quickly. Exactly. He's going to make me a classic Negroni. He tells me that ice is the most important part of a cocktail. Il Desco buys the ice in huge blocks, and then they're cut down. He adds equal parts of gin, an Italian red aperitif, and an Italian vermouth. We'll take this. The reason that we're stirring over shaking is that you do want a slight bit of dilution over a large bit of dilution that you would use while gotcha. you're shaking. Now, sometimes you do have to reform this ice just a little bit to make it make it fit. This ice being so solid that it yeah. will break a glass. Be, be, be gentle is what yes, you're saying. Yes, be gentle. I have done that myself. <laughs> nice color. Now, this particular cocktail is definitely on the bitter side, but also right. very balanced. We like peels over actual wedges because we are able to... No pulp, the oil. You get the essential oils. Yeah. There. I'm very big into presentation. Nice. So this is a traditional Negroni. The next drink he makes is called Pete's Word. Mike starts out with lime juice, cherry liqueur, and a French herbal liqueur, and he tops it off with scotch that adds a smoky flavor to the drink. Didn't that look awesome? Now, I'm a fan of craft cocktails, not a connoisseur. I'm not that knowledgeable, but I am a fan. Now, that's one of the problems with being a host of a TV show about food and drink. I get spoiled. <laughs> I used to be okay eating bologna sandwiches and drinking Kool-Aid. Now, that just won't do. <laughs> I feel like such a food snob. It's the same with beer. I didn't used to drink beer at all, but now I'm ruined. I love craft beer which is why you often see stories about craft beer here on the show too. Next, we're going to visit another one of my favorite places here in town. I just wanted to let you know that I'm now sending out The Insider every Tuesday. You'll get tips and ideas for cool things to do, plus you'll find out what I'm up to and where we're filming next, that kind of stuff. You can subscribe to The Insider on my website at inojacks.com. Okay. I should have warned you, I really should. There's one rule you need to follow when you sit down to enjoy an I Know Jacks episode. You can't be hungry. <laughs> and I can't stress this enough. You won't be able to enjoy the show on an empty stomach. Trust me, I've tried. It's hard. And this next story is really going to put you to the test. Today I'm at Trey Leche in Avondale, and I'm going to go try out their paella. I hear it's awesome. The one that we are doing today is a mixed paella, what they call mixed paella. That okay. is, uh, they have a chicken and seafood. Irene told me that the important thing is to start with really good homemade stock with chicken, fish, shrimp, cilantro, and you can let that cook for hours. For the paella, we're going to use mussels, scallops, fish, shrimp, squid, and chicken. It's very important. We olive use Spanish oil. olive oil. Okay. Not the Italian kind. No, the Italian. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we start with a little bit of olive oil in the pan and add the chicken first. Then we add the peppers to the pan. Green beans. When the vegetables get a little bit of color, we remove them. Okay, so Irene adds more fish to the pan and then it's time to add the scallops. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm um, going to get them out in a little bit, okay? okay? Now is the time for us to do the sofrito. That's basically peppers added to the chicken. 
You have to have a lot of patience to make paella. You have to watch the pan and not burn anything. And that's tough for me. When the peppers are soft, we add the saffron. Getting a good you know, I could do this all day with you, Irene. <laughs> Just hang out in the kitchen. <laughs> Yeah, I, I love, you know, cooking though. My dad cooks all his you life. You might have a hard time getting rid of me at the end of the night, you know yeah. that. <laughs> Next, it's time to add the calamari, AKA the squid. It's time to add the mussels. She also adds the fish back in. You guys might not be able to see this, but we're cooking about two inches above the top of the pan. <laughs> <laughs> Then Irene wraps the whole pan in aluminum foil and puts it in the oven to finish. Then it's time for my favorite part, the unveiling. This paella smells so good. So traditional paella at Tre Leche in Avondale. I'm telling you what, this is incredible. You know what, the evening's not over either. We've got desserts and a live band. How about that? We started in this little quadruplex building that was built in 1921 and, uh, in Springfield. A very tiny little bakery <laughs> setting, uh, only a couple tables. And uh, we're very proud uh, that we could start in such a small space and you know, be able to grow. Now I know, I mean, most people think about you, they think bakery, but from what we've had tonight, that's not all you do by a long shot. No, definitely not. And people don't know the history in Irene's family. Her father owned a restaurant for 30 years in Puerto La Cruz, Venezuela. Venezuela. Uh, she did catering, had a deli bakery in Caracas, Venezuela, okay. uh, back in the 90s. Okay. Thursday evenings, we have the live music. Uh, Friday and Saturday, uh, same as Thursday night with the seafood pie, Spanish tapa, dinners. And then Sundays, uh, become pretty popular with our Sunday brunch. It's an audience. I haven't had that one yet. I'm looking forward to Please, it. Please, you gotta try it. <laughs> That's such a cool place and the people there are really nice. Now when you go, please let them know that you saw their story right here on I Know Jax. I'd really appreciate it. Here at I Know Jax, we do our best to support local businesses in the community. Visit our website to find out how we can help promote your business on iknowjax.com. Call Joe directly at 904-345-0755 or visit iknowjax.com forward slash advertising. I Know Jax is a local show and I often describe it as a mom and pop business. We have two people on staff, me on camera and my wife behind it. That's it. We're a small team. <laughs> I Know Jax is also a locally owned show. We're not backed by some media conglomerate and we don't have any kind of big money backing. <laughs> I wish we did sometimes. We're truly an independent local business and I believe that is what makes us unique. Sure, it's difficult financially sometimes, or most of the time anyway, <laughs> but it also means that we are free to do whatever stories we think you would like to see. So if you like what we do, you can help us grow. Sign up for our weekly insider on our website if you haven't already, and tell your friends to subscribe too. You know what they say, sharing is caring. So I'm down at Juliet at the Omni International Hotel hanging out with Chef Ernie. And Ernie, you're gonna make me ceviche, right? Scallop ceviche. All right, show me how you do this because I know you guys do it a little special way here. The scallops have been marinated in orange juice, grapefruit juice, and lime. Chef Ernie starts with a little bit of fresh orange and lime juice. Then he cuts the scallops into really thin slices. So it took six hours to cook in the, in the juice itself, the citrus. Yes, sir. It. Now, what made you pick ceviche? You, you knew I like ceviche, is that it? You did uh, some research? Uh, no, no. I really <laughs> like ceviche, so I'm, I'm from uh, Puerto Rico. We used to uh, eat a lot of ceviche, you know. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, that, yeah, in the heat, that's always a great dish, isn't it? And here where we are, we have so much great seafood. It's incredible. Sure. Next, we add diced tomatoes. Sweet These peppers. are sweet peppers, right? Sweet peppers, yeah. yes, sir. 
You know the recipe, huh? Uh, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm paying attention. <laughs> Uh, People think audience. I'll just stand around and look pretty, but I don't. I actually pay attention. The rest. <laughs> he also adds garlic, onions, and a little bit of salt and pepper. Chef Ernie is also adding thyme. That's a little different than most ceviche recipes. I don't think I've ever seen that in a ceviche. Okay. For me, I, I really like the, uh, thyme because it like, gives you the, uh, uh, good, uh, good flavor. Right. The a little so, savory to it almost. Oh, yes, right? it is. Yes. And doing it fresh, that's going to make it even stronger. That's cool. These chefs always have to make everything look pretty. And I, and I, I ask always, and I heard, I, the answer I keep hearing is you eat with your eyes first. I think you're just so you're frustrated artists. So I'm going to put this as a garnish as one well, that give you what, On what top of what, yeah, yeah. And also you can uh, put a uh, fresh avocado if you want, dice. Right. And peppers, uh, hot peppers. Oh, there, now you're talking my language. And doing the, doing the ceviche with orange juice, that makes it a little sweeter, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. Fresh chives on top. I'm going to come back to my statement, you're a frustrated artist. <laughs> <laughs> and last, he adds cilantro. Now, isn't that just a colorful work of art? That's it for this week's episode. I'll be back next week with a brand new one. But until then, I'll see you on the internet. I hope you enjoyed the video. I would love to hear from you in the comments below. Now, if this is your first time watching an iKnowJax.com video, I would love to have you subscribe so that I can continue to help you find fun things to do in the Jacksonville area. Every weekday, I do a daily video update to remind you of the things that are happening this week. Plus, we do features on great restaurants in the River City and a weekly video calendar of events to help you plan for awesome experiences. And last but not least, every week we create a new full-length episode on all the best places to eat local, drink local, and be local. So subscribe, and I'll see you again soon.